Okay, so now let's look at this uh, problem, our example 312, and we'll work through this, make sure that we understand it. The, um, the problem basically involves this um, very large reel of paper. And this might be something that you would see in a, in a, a paper mill, right? And, and it's, it's, it's large, it's 1.8 meters, almost six feet in diameter. It has a length of 5.6 meters. And um, we're given the moment of inertia or the J number for this um, paper load is 4,500 kilogram meters squared. We're driving this reel, and as the as the as the paper is being produced and processed, you know it's being rolled up onto this big onto this big reel. Okay, and it's driven by a directly coupled variable speed DC motor. We don't really have to concern ourselves with the particulars of that yet, and it uh, it's turning at 120 RPMs. And there's a force, a constant force, a constant tension of 6,000 newtons um, exerted on the paper. So regardless, you know, this, this reel is changing size as it gets larger and more paper accumulates on it. But it's important that we maintain the same tension on that paper so that you know it doesn't tear or whatever through that process and so that's being monitored and um, it's said to be 6,000 newtons now one real quick aside here i want you to to think about these things as we go through this course and i want you to know that everything here could be monitored by some type of a system and if we can model it and monitor it then we can control it and that's what we're working toward, you know, in a, in a motor course, you know, is getting into the motor, con you know, understand how a motor works first. Let's, let's get the basics and understand the theory. Then we can apply that theory to specifics and we can monitor it with sensors and different um, equipment. We can get signals from those inputs. We can create logic that will respond to differences in the inputs and affect the outputs from that. So everything we're talking about could be modeled into a motor control system. So the first thing he's saying to do, let's count, cal <laughs> calculate the power of the motor when the reel turns at a constant speed of 120 RPMs. Now these are the kind of, of things that, you know, something like that gets laid on you and you, you're like, where do I begin? Okay. so everything in this course and everything in this field, it, you know, it's equation based. So you need those equations at the forefront of your brain and you need to be thinking about that. And, you know, I like having a comprehensive list of equations in front of me. So I'm thinking about this thing. And, and I know from what I've learned earlier that I had a, a an equation for power of a motor that said the power of a motor is equal to the speed in RPMs divided, or, or excuse me, that speed times the torque divided by 9.55. Okay, the question is asking for the power. I've got the speed. I've already told, been told that's 120 RPMs. Again, that could be monitored and, and observed and controlled. The one thing I don't have is the torque, but I do, if I go back even further in this chapter, I have a, an equation that says torque, twisting force, is equal to the force times the radius. Our force is 6,000 newtons. Our radius for this particular um, problem is 1.8 meters divided by two, 1.8 divided by two because our equation asks for radius and we're given diameter. And then when we uh, multiply that out, we get 5,400 and it's torque. So it's Newton meters. That's what units our torque is given in. So now we have everything we need. 
I know the power in this situation is equal to 120 RPMs times a torque of 5,400 Newton meters divided by this constant 9.55 that we talked about earlier, why we use that. And then if we crunch this through our calculator, we come up with 67.85 kilowatts. Then we could do that conversion that we know uh, 746 watts equals um, one horsepower. And if we go through that calculation for this problem, we would get approximately 91 horsepower is the power of the motor turning at 120 RPMs. Now let's let's talk the talk and make sure that we understand and, and you know we want to we want to put this into these these things that we that we understand and, and it starts to make sense. And the first thing I want to point out to you that a 91 horsepower electric motor is a big motor. And so um, first I'll point that out and we'll kind of get used to that as we, as we go through these things. Part B of this is asking us uh, the following. He says, as the speed increases from 120 to 160, the load torque stays constant because the tension in the paper remains unchanged. So what we're trying to do, he says, if the speed has to be raised from 120 to 160 in five seconds, what would be the torque that the motor must develop during this interval, okay? And then again, qualifying that a little bit, the speed increases, but the load torque stays the same because the tension in the paper remains unchanged. And you know, that's just something that I guess we kind of just need to know that, you know, that, that tension needs to remain the same so the paper doesn't tear or whatever. And, and so, um, and torque is, you know, force times the radius and, and those are, are constant through here. So anyway, he says, you know, let the required motor torque be T sub M. It must be greater than the load torque in order for the speed to increase. All right, so we know that from the previous section. So what I did, you know, here's our, here's our problem or here's our equation that we can use to solve the problem. Change in speed is 9.55 times the motor torque minus the load torque times the change in time divided by the moment of inertia. <clears throat> now, I want you to look on page 59. And what Wildy does in the solution of this, it's fine. And I, you know, it, it, in, in some ways it makes the problem easier to solve. You know, he goes ahead and he says, okay, well, delta N, that is 160 minus 120. I'm going from 120 up to 160. You know, that's the gist of the problem here. And so the, the delta N is, the, or the change in speed is 40 RPMs, okay? And he, he goes ahead and replaces that in the equation, right? And then he knows the J number and he places that in the equation he knows what the uh, load torque is, right? We know the load torque from uh, here, it's, it's 5,400 Newton meters. So what he did, and, and I, I get this, the change in time is, uh, it has to happen in five seconds, uh, place the J number here. And, and he places those actual values into the equation, you know, and then he solves it. And I would give you that that is probably a, um, um, a simpler way to do, but I like to get, you know, accustomed to, to uh, being comfortable with the math that's involved in this. And, you know, so I went ahead and just solve this for what we're looking for algebraically before we put any values in there. So I'm trying to give you the motor torque. And so Delta N is 40 and J is 4,500. The Delta T is five seconds and that is 9.55. And then we're gonna add that to the load torque, which we already know is um, 54, 5,400 Newton meters, okay? And so, I don't know, I, I just like to, to be able to, to, to do the math, uh, to generally do the math. I think it sort of pays off for us in the long term. But, but anyway, either way, it'll get you to the same place. 
So if I take 40 times 40, 4,500, and I divide that by five times 955, and I add 5,400 to that, um, let's see here. Uh, I get in my calculator 9.1696 times 10 to the third, or 9169.6, and that of course is torque or Newton meters. He says it's 9170 in the, in the textbook. Now, once I know that, um, he tells me that the, the motor must develop a constant torque of 9170 Newton meters during the acceleration period which is five seconds. And then he gives us um, also the mechanical power of the um, motor during this time period where we're uh, increasing the speed. So I'm not sure, let's see, the problem doesn't even ask for this, but let's, let's look at what that is. Power of a motor. And again, we're at 160 now. We went from 120 to 160. And the uh, torque was 9170. We'll just use his number. And then uh, dividing by 9.55. And he says that the power of the motor during this acceleration has increased from what it was originally, which was 91 horsepower, to now where uh, the, that motor is outputting 153.6 kilowatts or 206 horsepower. Now think about that for a second. You know, you've got a motor there in this uh, situation and you can't specify a 91 horsepower motor or even a 100 horsepower motor, right? Because you need it to, to do other things and other uh, circumstances. So, you know, in terms of this motor, you know, we said, wow, that 91 horsepower, that's a big motor. Uh, we were just talking about a particular um, application. Look, this motor even needs to be larger than that to be able to do what we're talking about here. So, you know, it needs to be able to output um, 206 horsepower at that point. Okay, now let's look at the last section. Okay, the last section is saying, what's the power of the motor after it's reached this desired speed of 160 RPMs. This is what's really interesting. All right, now watch this. So um, the speed is 160, that's our N, right? That's our RPMs. The torque is 5,400 Newton meters. You know, that has never changed because that is the uh, low torque that we're talking about. And then, um, now we're dividing by 9.55. And at this point, if we go through and we calculate this out, we're gonna come up with a motor that's 90.5 kilowatts, or it is outputting 121 horsepower, okay? So this motor is going through different ranges of, of uh, power outputs based on what the load is coupled to it. And this, all of this again, and I don't want to beat this up too much. I know it's early in the course, but all of these things, all these different parameters that, that we're tossing around here, they can all be monitored and they can be uh, controlled. And, and we, can, we can, you know, create these systems that, that do this and, and it just makes this whole topic and this whole area just a fascinating, interesting place to be. And so you're going to get this great foundation in, in motor and motor theory. You're going to know how they operate. And then you're going to get into your, your uh, other courses where you learn uh, things like PLCs and so forth and so on. And, and you'll better understand how to go about making that uh, uh, PLC do what it needs to do for the particular application.